Photos have always contributed a lot to documenting modern history, and for some reason, one of the ones I've always found fascinating is this one from 1911. Well, okay, this one is technically a more digitally remastered version. This is the original real photo, which instead of modern digital coloring technology used what was called a three-color portrait technique. You have three different negatives in blue, red, and green, and you can see them overlaid based on those edges right there. Sergei Prokudin Gorsky is the photographer who came up with this technique, and during the final years of the Russian Empire he was going around it and documenting different cultural groups within it. The subject of this photo is Sayyid Mir Muhammad Alim Khan, the final Emir of Bukhara, which at this point is basically a protectorate within the Russian Empire. Technically independent, but powerless to really do anything Russia didn't want it to do. Sayyid would go through an interesting experience as Bukhara and the Russian Empire would soon be no more. But before we get into that, it's time to thank this video sponsor, NordVPN. If you've ever wanted a more secure browsing experience while online, you're going to want to start with a VPN. NordVPN has servers all around the world you can connect with to help hide your traffic data and protect it. If you've also ever wanted to get around pesky localized content settings on websites, such as streaming services, now you can connect to the server on which country's view of the web you want to see. Bukhara isn't a country anymore, but if it did exist still, I wouldn't be surprised if NordVPN would have a server for it. Luckily, if you click the URL in the description or use the code EMPEROR-TIGERSTAR when purchasing NordVPN, you can get a 66% discount. That means you're only paying $3.96 a month, and they've even thrown in one additional free month as well. Protect and enhance your browsing experience and get NordVPN today. Sayyid was born in 1880 in Bukhara City, seven years after the Emirate became a Russian protectorate. Typically, when a country is a protectorate, it means they've given up control over their foreign affairs at minimum, and sometimes other things such as defense or currency. Basically, imagine the bigger country just barging in and going, don't worry, we'll take care of everything for you, just sit back and don't make a fuss about it. Or else. However, that didn't mean the ruler of the protectorate still didn't have some sort of absolute power. In the case of Bukhara, the emir was an absolute monarch in any situation where Russia didn't object. Once Sayyid had the throne in 1910, Bukhara was starting to go through similar motions that other nations had in the previous 150 years or so. People wanted reforms in government and social policy, and the idea of an absolute monarch seemed more and more outdated. A group called the Young Bukharians was formed in 1909 with the goals of establishing a scientifically driven style of reformation for the country. There was an ongoing political battle between the reformists and the traditionalists. At first, Sayyid seemed to favor the reformists, but for an unknown reason he ended up going hard the other direction and instead remained solidly traditionalist. An important Tajik writer named Sadridin Aini grew up living under Bukharan rule, and in his book he mentioned that since the official language of Bukhara was Persian, he would be punished via whipping for speaking in Tajik. Other local Central Asian ethnicities would face similar suppression of aspects of their culture. In 1911, there was also an attempt to make a decree to kick out the Jewish population of Bukhara and kill anyone who didn't comply. But needless to say, that didn't mean there weren't conflicts and harsh decrees against Jews under Sayyid's rule anyway. All of these factors led to more behind-the-scenes hostilities against the emir. But for a while, things would also turn against the Russians as well. In 1916, a large revolt began in the Central Asian territories of the Russian Empire in response to the continuation of World War I and the strain it put on their resources. They were especially against the forced conscription of Central Asian men. In the city of Kujand, a mob attacked a Russian official and within weeks the revolt spread to other areas. While Bukhara wasn't affected by the revolt itself, the emir did cooperate with Russian forces in helping to suppress the revolt, so that didn't go very well. Despite the revolt being suppressed in early 1917, there would of course be the Russian Revolution later in November. At first, the Tsar's overthrow didn't impact Emir Said's rule, but as the revolution turned to civil war, the success of the Bolshevik forces inspired the young Bukharans to stage their own revolts. With support from the Bolsheviks, the young Bukharians attempted to overthrow the Emir in March of 1918. The Emir, however, was able to defeat the forces as they were poorly organized, and their leaders ended up having to flee Bukhara for the time being. The main Soviet armies had to ignore Bukhara for the time being because they were dealing with other white Russian forces elsewhere during the Civil War. So the Emir had some time, but not really much else. 
In September of 1920, a more organized Soviet army came in and after four days seized the capital, causing Said to flee the city and eventually Bukhara altogether. Bukhara itself was absorbed into the Soviet Union, where for four years it was one of the Soviet socialist republics that made up the country. Then in 1924 there was a reorganization where there were instead Soviet socialist republics for Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, with Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan being formed a few years later. The former emir would die in exile in 1944. Notably, his daughter Shukriya got a career in radio and eventually was a voice for Voice of America until she retired in 2002. Apparently she's still alive today, so good for her. Bukhara still exists as a city, and of course there are plenty of buildings and such from the time, but ultimately the rule of Amir Said would represent the quick changes Central Asia would go through during the 20th century. And yet, despite all of that, he is still mostly remembered for this photo. I guess it goes to show how sometimes history can be very weird in what it chooses to remember and for what reason. In the meantime, I'm Emperor Tigerstar, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks once again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video.